Hey guys, it's Amanda. I feel like I haven't filmed a video in a minute, so I am adjusting. I've been spending the last few weeks um, really producing and rewriting and directing this short film that I've been working on for a while. And now that the kind of hard part actually filming it is over, I have some more time to work on YouTube videos, so I'm really excited and I'm gonna try to like get a more consistent posting schedule. I'm gonna try to post Fridays at 12 p.m. Anyway, today I'm going to be talking about colorism, more specifically the labels dark skin and brown skin. Honestly, I feel like I never really heard the term brown skin until very recently. I knew there was the Beyonce song Brown Skin Girl, but recently on my TikTok feed, I've been seeing a lot of debate over who is brown skin and who is dark skin and what these labels encompass. So today I'm just going to kind of examine this whole debate because I find it incredibly interesting. I'm going to start by talking about my personal experience with these labels and then get into what I've noticed about the internet discourse on this. So growing up, I knew there were endless shades of black because my mom really made it a point to buy us picture books that emphasize that, such as The Color of Us and Shades of Black. You know, all those classic growing up black picture books. Also, my dad and my sister and my grandma and a few of my other family members have more of a peach skin tone and would probably be considered light skin. So I understood that you could be racially classified as black even if the color of your skin didn't match that description. I'd basically always use the apricot or pink crayon to draw my dad and sister because they didn't have the same brown skin as me and my other siblings and my mom. But honestly, in our household, their skin tone didn't really have any other implications beyond that. It literally was a skin deep thing, which I feel really lucky for because experiencing colorism from your own family definitely isn't unheard of. There weren't any colorist tendencies in our household, but me and my siblings did try to trick my sister by telling her that she was adopted sometimes. I think as I got older, my self-esteem was mostly impacted by the external mythical Eurocentric beauty standard that I saw perpetuated in media and in my peers in a predominantly white school system. Even though I definitely experienced microaggressions here and there, I wouldn't say I experienced colorism simply because most of the people I was surrounded by were white and colorism is usually more explicitly verbalized by those who are the same race as you. I think the main reason why I ever wanted lighter skin isn't necessarily because of super formative interpersonal experiences, but because of the larger looming beauty standard, which basically said the closer to white you are, the prettier and more desirable you are. So I definitely know in the dark days of my life when I use Snapchat, I choose filters that would slightly lighten my skin and make me look more like Eurocentric. And that really, you know, just messes up what you think about yourself when you take that off. It's just like, oh, that's what I really look like and it, it's a whole thing. But I also remember using like editing apps like Afterlight to turn up the exposure on pictures to make my skin as light as possible without making it seem unnatural. Even though I never had anyone tell me to my face, oh, lighter skin is better, I think that the media I consumed and seeing how my white peers were treated in comparison to me sent that message in a way that was just as explicit. I was definitely aware that there were people who had a darker skin than me and I never was one to like explicitly label myself as dark skin or light skin. But I knew that I didn't have light skin because I was darker than my sister and my dad and I knew you know, that's what light skin looks like. So I think I always just kind of internally identified myself as dark skin. And I say internally because I never really found it necessary to explicitly state that. I also feel like those identifiers are labels that people more so use within the black community. And as I said before, I didn't really have much of a black community in my daily life. It was basically like, I'm usually the only black person in my class or my activity or whatever, and white people see me as black, so there's not really a point in trying to amend that in any way by calling myself dark skin or light skin or whatever. I'm sure there were points in my childhood when I told my mom, oh, I'm not black, I'm brown, <laughs> which you know is objectively true because practically speaking, of course, 
my skin is brown and all black people's skin is brown, but I understood very quickly that racially I was black. So honestly, until very recently when I started hearing this term brown skin, I self-identified as dark skin and I thought other people saw me that way too. Okay, so this brings me to brown skin. What does it mean? Where did it come from? And why are people, at least people on my For You page, starting to use the term more frequently? So like anyone looking for information in the 21st century, I consulted Google. It's not a peer-reviewed academic journal, but I found a comprehensive answer in this Quora post from Georgia Hayward. It reads, Brown skins fall in between dark skins and light skins. Light skins are usually half white or have light skin parents. Some examples are Zendaya, Georgia Smith, and Amanda Stenberg. Brown skins aren't quite as light as light skins, but they're still light. Examples, Beyonce, Nicki Minaj, and Megan Thee Stallion. Dark skins have pigmented brown skin. It's usually at your own discretion when it comes to determining who's dark skin and who's brown skin, because many dark skin girls call themselves brown skin despite being dark skin. Examples, Normani, Whitney Houston, Ari Lennox. Of course, this isn't rule or law, it's just a post on the internet that I'm sure people disagree with, but it's a starting point nonetheless. So where did the term brown skin, specifically in the context of black people, come from? Before I even get into this, I feel like it's always so important to add that race is a social construct, meaning that it's a human-invented classification system. It was invented as a way to define physical differences between people, but has more often been used as a tool for oppression and violence. So now that that's out of the way, it's important to note that in America, the defining feature of whiteness is exclusivity, to keep as many people from being classified as white as possible. And that's why the one drop rule was invented. If you had any sort of blackness in you, no matter how small the percentage, you were black, not white. So this is why black people come in all shades. Blackness was constructed to be inclusive, so there could be more people to oppress and exploit. And this is where colorism comes in. Because black people have such a wide variety of skin tones that are measured relative to whiteness, naturally, well, not naturally because race isn't biologically real, rather consequently, the closer you are to white, the more privileges you're afforded, both by institutions like the school or the legal systems, but even on more interpersonal levels when it comes to desirability, romance, and even job prospects. It's also important to note that colorism plays out differently in different communities and contexts. There is colorism performed by white power structures like courts, schools, and businesses, and colorism as practiced within the Black community evidenced when we talk about marriage statistics and measurements of color. Amongst Black communities, there has been one prominent distinction between the different shades of Black, and it's whether you're light-skinned or not. And this even manifested into the brown paper bag test, which was used to determine what privileges an individual could have. Only those with skin color that matched or was lighter than a brown paper bag were allowed admission or membership privileges in certain spaces. The test was believed by many to be used in the 20th century by many African-American institutions such as sororities, fraternities, and churches. I'll be like, am I dark skin? Am I light skin? I can't tell. I'm brown skin. I'm brown skin. For centuries, the spectrum of blackness has been split down the middle and labeled as binary. Even recently as 2016, hashtags like hashtag team light skin and hashtag team dark skin divided black Twitter feeds. But in 2019, there was a shift and her name was Beyonce. Brown Skin Girl was released in 2019 and with this came a wave of black girl magic, specifically dark skin black girl magic. Of course, the song is incredibly inclusive, but there was a conscious choice to highlight dark skin black women. I just don't think dark skin girl has the same ring as brown skin girl. 
Of course, Beyonce didn't invent the term brown skin. I'm sure plenty of people have referred to themselves in that way before because all shades of black skin tones are really some variation of brown, but I do think her song made the term a bit more mainstream, socially acceptable, and alleviated the previously stark and restrictive labels of light skin or dark skin. Because like in life, in skin tone, there are gray, rather brown areas. I think a lot of people felt seen and empowered by Brown Skin Girl for two reasons. One, I think dark skinned girls and women were happy to be so explicitly celebrated in popular media for once. And two, I think there were people who probably didn't feel comfortable labeling themselves as either dark skin or light skin. And brown skin is a very happy medium that is pragmatic and has more of a positive connotation than dark skin, which has historically been demeaned and marginalized within black communities and other communities of color. Though Beyonce's use of brown skin was meant to be inclusive and celebratory of dark skinned black women, the term brown skin has found its way out of the context of this catchy song and into being used as another categorization for a particular range of shades on the spectrum of blackness, the shades that aren't particularly light skin but aren't dark skin either. And I personally only started noticing this because of TikToks that were showing up on my For You page. So like I mentioned earlier, I kind of always internally identified myself as dark skin because I very clearly knew I wasn't light skin and those kind of seemed to be the two most prominent labels. So honestly, when I saw brown skin popping up as this new sort of classification, I was confused. I saw the term kind of being used and perceived in two different ways. One was to earnestly make more space in the binary for people who truly felt like they didn't fit under the labels of dark skin or light skin, which is valid and understandable. There were some people out there that felt that labeling themselves as dark skin, even if they didn't have the darkest skin ever, might detract from the experiences and hardships that people with skin tones darker than them experienced. But the second more prominent way I saw brown skin being both used and perceived was as a way of distinguishing and distancing oneself from the label of dark skin. Most TikToks I saw were of people who were frustrated with the term because it felt like people were trying to distance themselves from being labeled dark skin, so they would call themselves brown skin. In this weird racial caste system we live in, as long as you perceive yourself to be in a higher social tier than someone else, you're good. You're not the lowest on the totem pole. I think some people, specifically people who already identified as having dark skin, perceive the term brown skin to be an unnecessary term that places people who identify as dark skinned on an even lower tier in this racial caste system. I don't want to be black, I want to be white. Man, get the Whoa. Fuck out. <laughs> and this marks the beginning of my anti brown skin com campaign. If you have been personally victimized or just annoyed by the brown skins you have seen on this app in your area, feel free to join me. Because uh, y'all y'all not getting bullied enough. We've been, we been letting y'all slide. And um, I don't like that. You know, you're no longer sliding. So what does this even mean? The top comment on this video reads Brown skins should just be considered dark skins too they're really holding on to the fact that they're almost light skin. And another one reads, brown skins are just dark skins that don't want to admit it to themselves. While I think these points may be true about some people, it's also important to note that different people who identify as brown skin genuinely have different intentions, some more pure than others. I truly don't think everyone who identifies as brown skin is self-hating or trying to distance themselves from being dark skin. When I openly identify as dark skin, I found that people are confused or upset because it seems like I'm trying to claim an experience that they don't think I've truly realized because relative to all the shades of black, I don't have the darkest skin ever, so they'll label me as brown skin. And of course, it's important to note that dark and light are relative depending on where you are. In a lot of spaces I was in growing up, I was the darkest person in the room because I was the only black person there. So that has influenced my perception of myself. But in the context of putting myself out on the internet where I can be compared to an endless number of different shades, then I'm usually not perceived as dark skin. My main hesitation with claiming brown skin is that I don't want it to come off as if I'm trying to distance myself from being dark skin because 
honestly, I'm not. And if someone perceives me to be dark skin, it's not something to be ashamed of or offended by. Okay, so now I want to talk about brown skin privilege and if it even exists. Do I believe that brown skin privilege exists? Yes, to an extent. I've kind of come to the conclusion that in order to benefit from brown skin privilege in a meaningful way, you need to have the right features to go along with it. And of course, these right features are relative to the socially constructed Eurocentric beauty standard that doesn't have a basis in real science, but has persisted long enough to be deemed the standard. And in this society, the closer you are to that standard, the more privileges and benefits you reap because of it. With that being said, I think brown skin people can experience privilege to varying degrees depending on the following factors. One of the factors is if you have the ideal body type of the time, which right now is basically having an hourglass shape. Another part of body shape is build. If you're more muscular and tall, this detracts from the dainty, frail form of femininity which the Eurocentric beauty standard idealizes. And even if you have curves, the beauty standard demands that the rest of your body is gaunt and devoid of as much bulky muscle and fat as possible so as to take up less space. Another feature is having a slim, narrow, upturned nose because that is commonly associated with being Eurocentric as well. And of course, having looser, longer hair basically hair that isn't short or 4C because, again, it's more Eurocentric. And even having the right size lips, like full lips because they're trendy right now, and even still you need to have like the right shape and the right size of fullness that like the Kardashians or whatever have. <laughs> So do I think you can experience brown skin privilege if you have all of these features? 100%. And do I think you can experience brown skin privilege with even some of these features? Yes. But I think if you're not close to the beauty standard as possible, brown skin privilege is negligible. And I even think that in some cases, you wouldn't be afforded the label of brown skin itself if you don't have several of these features. I've seen people use the line between dark skin and brown skin as a way to determine pretty versus not. People will say, oh, you're not dark skin, you're pretty, you're brown skin. And I think people forget that brown skin and the privileges that come with it are more nuanced than the distinction between light skin and dark skin. And the benefits one reaps from being brown skin can heavily depend on other physical characteristics and even economic class. We've seen that light-skinned people were afforded class privileges that dark-skinned people were not, and I would think the same could follow for having brown skin versus dark skin, even if those privileges are comparatively negligible. I think that brown skin privilege can help you, but it won't save you or elevate you in life the way that light skin privilege does. And if you don't have the other features that align with the beauty standard working in your favor, having brown skin isn't going to afford you discernible privileges, especially if you're already the only black person in a space. And now to conclude this video is the categorization slash the colorization of brown skin as a sub affinity group of black people necessary and or productive. Racial labels were created with the intention to divide and oppress people, though they are scientifically baseless, the social implications of them are all too real, and I think that's an important thing to note when talking about groups and labels within a race as well. So is it productive and effective to say that because this isn't biologically real, we shouldn't use labels like dark skin, light skin, or brown skin anymore, and we shouldn't acknowledge the privileges that come with these different skin tones. No, I think what matters more is the connotation behind them and getting to a point first and foremost within ourselves and then within our communities and then within the larger world that these labels don't have to be divisive or relative to one another on a hierarchy, rather they can equally coexist on a horizontal plane and be celebrated. And honestly, I think Beyonce's brown skin girl was a really good first step at attempting to equalize skin tones on a larger scale. I do think it's important if you identify as brown skin to question your intentions and ask yourself if it's coming from a place of wanting to distinguish yourself from being dark skin or if it's just a label that you genuinely feel like fits you. 
Of course, it's important to remember that shades of black are on a spectrum and so is privilege. And it's important to recognize and acknowledge your own privilege within this white supremacist system. But outside of this man-made rule, there is nothing wrong with having dark skin and it should be embraced with open arms. At the end of the day, individual labels will never capture the full nuance of things that exist on a spectrum, so I don't think it's productive to fight in comments with strangers on the internet about skin color or anything really, but I think it's important to have discussions in your social circles and communities about colorism because honestly, you can't solve a problem if you can't even talk about it. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I find this discourse to be really fascinating and interesting and would love to hear your thoughts below. Um, I will see you in my next video and have a great day. Bye!